Now for a cup final with a different tale of goals. The cup looked a good thing for the Wolves in 1939. Portsmouth had done well, but the Wolves were the team with the reputation. But what an inspired game Pompey played. You can tell Pompey by their white shorts and the fact that they're getting all the goals. Goal after goal. And we make it seem a few more by repeating in slow motion. Portsmouth kick off after half time. Barlow swings it over to Parker, who races up the wing. Parker centres, Barlow scores. Too easy. Watch the same goal in slow motion. The ball comes to Scott from Barlow, and the goal is a couple of yards out of goal. He half stops it, spins round, but just can't retrieve it. It's over the line, but Parker takes no chance and forces it into the net. No disputed goals for him. Now there's a dance. Pompey's glands are working so well, they're back to childhood days and dancing ring a ring a roses. Then the wolves actually get one. Notice the goalie has wide shorts, otherwise it looks like another of Pompey's series. Did Wolverhampton Wanderers find a few excuses for themselves that day? I hope not. By the way, isn't it an extraordinary thing that you can normally count on a good day for the cup final, but for a test match at Manchester, it's the old story. Rain stop play. Well, well, it doesn't always rain on Merseyside. For the Grand National, Aintree usually manages to attract the weather as well as the crowds. And perhaps you'll be able to look at this selection of Grand National pictures, you chaps who've taken so many ditches and hurdles in the last few years yourselves, with a new fellow feeling for horse and rider. This, by the way, was the year of Reynolds Town's first win. 1936 was a year of sensations. Avenger was the favourite that year, and there were a lot of early falls. Golden Miller was pulled up lame. Avenger, the favourite, falls. Here's Reynolds down again, striding out magnificently, and as they reach the last fence, Davy Jones runs out, and out of the course means out of the race. So Reynolds down wins for a second successive year. This is certainly the most spectacular of sports. Every year, a new thrill. It may be a large number of falls, it may be the failure of a famous horse, or it may be a close finish. What would it be this year, 1938? the last stages, Royal Daniele and Workman. Now another horse comes into the picture, Battleship. Battleship was American-owned and considered too small to jump the course, but he's taken the last fence side by side with the Irishman Royal Daniele, and in the run-in the finish is so close that none but the judges could separate the two. But it was Battleship who got the verdict, ridden by a lad of 17, Bruce Hobbs. 
Not bad going, winning the Grand National at the age of 17. Your memories of sport are part of the scheme of things you're fighting for. For sport is one of the things which Britain has given to the world and we want to keep its spirit sporting and sportsmanlike. So to hell with Sieg Heil and all it stands for and give us the full-throated roar of a cup final crowd again. <laughs>